We've now been on two low downforce tracks in a row, but we make our way to the most technical track on the F1 calendar, which is the Singapore GP. This is yet again another street track in a row after Baku, but with completely different characteristics and way more low speed and medium speed corners. This technical track requires teams to usually change up a lot on their car, kind of like Monaco. So we end up seeing some big upgrades here. Specifically in 2023, we had upgrades from Aston Martin, McLaren, and what was Alpha Tari and is now V-Carb, they brought their biggest upgrade of the year as well in Singapore. We will have upgrades from some small teams here that really badly need it, and a very big team is bringing a big package here already set by their team principal that we will talk about. But right before going over all the teams, wanted to thank you guys for the support on the channel. Killer, as always, makes me so happy to be making content for you guys, the best by far, and you guys really deliver what I ask. If you're new here, go ahead and subscribe. We're killing on the channel, let's keep doing that. But let's get started with the upgrades coming to the Singapore GP. As I stated, some small teams are bringing upgrades here, and I wanna go over those first before we get into the big teams. The obvious upgrades coming here are coming from Williams, Williams has stated that this new upgrade coming to the car is just going to be enhancements on what they already added in Zanvoort, in addition to add on to their on-track performance, which has been very good, but this is a completely different track to what we just had in Baku and Monza. They did finally have a Monaco package. It's been a very long time since Williams has actually been able to provide a package for a specific GP. So I do expect them to bring back some very high downforce parts and see if they can have it correlating with this new package they brought in Zandvoort. These additions have been confirmed by James Valls, so let's expect them here. Next small team bringing parts is V-Carb, and they desperately need it after what was a pretty bad Monza and a very bad Baku. Yuki was very unlucky in Monza and Ricardo was very unlucky in Baku, so it's not really up to the drivers but the team overall has just had a horrible package and they haven't really been in the points for a little bit. The car itself is not too bad in slow speed corners, so we should see them jump back in performance a little bit. It's always been the straight line stuff that's really killed them, but the package they're bringing here in Singapore should drastically change the car. The team will be bringing actually the RB20 suspension package at some point to the car it's rumored that it could be possibly coming to Singapore. The more likely outcome is Coda, and their actual aerodynamic package is coming here to help Daniel and Yuki go up the grid because as of lately, no matter where they qualify, they're pretty much going down. The car lacks a lot of grip as well as that straight line speed. So high speed corners are also really bad, but this track doesn't have too many of them. So we could see a revitalized V-carb here, which would be nice because the team hasn't scored points in a while and Asmarn has actually been gaining a little bit of traction as of lately. I didn't really mention it because I didn't go over the Baku upgrades due to being sick. Still am a little bit, but a bit better. But they did bring an upgrade to the rear corner. And as we can see, the connector from the side pod area down to the floor, that strake that prevents the floor from jumping up and down while going on these tough tracks was something that was changed from Monza to Baku. But the team did look better. Their tire degradation was good. And actually the car itself was running pretty well. Fernando said he found a lot of grip that he didn't expect and they brought back the Imola floor, funny enough. Fernando extracted a good amount of pace. We won't see upgrades at least confirmed here in Singapore. There is supposedly a big evolution coming to the car in Coda. But that covers it for the small teams. Let's go over the big teams. First team that I want to cover is Red Bull who just brought a package in Baku in the diffuser and there should be a new floor in addition to this helping out with this car. The new floor that's supposed to be coming is supposed to be a combined effort from what they had in the beginning of the season to their latest floor, and they've just recently discovered that they actually took the wrong step all the way in 2023 at the Spanish GP. Now, I find that very hard to believe, but it's possible considering the gap that they had and how fast the car was, they really didn't have to think too much about how efficient the upgrades were. And really, Max was just insane in 2023. He's doing good in 2024 as well. But Baku was a very, very off-putting performance from him. It's not very common we get a performance like that from Max, but the car was understeering like a boat. Now, Checo does have a better grip on understeer than Max, but Max is the faster driver. 
The team has talked about the lessons that they've learned from this immediate reaction on the upgrade they just brought will be taken into Singapore and there is potential for another evolution here. So it's possible it is being confirmed by Monaghan that we could see this upgrade here in Singapore. But Coda is where Helmut Marco and other Red Bull members have stated that's where they really expect will be a big performance jump for their car. The balance in the car has been very uneven and it's going to take a lot for them to actually jump back up with the team that's also bringing a very significant package here and something that's been awaited for a while. McLaren is the last team and we do have confirmation from Andrea Stella himself saying yes I can confirm that we have some stuff coming for the next races and I will let the FIA document surprise when they are published. I like this statement by him. It's nice to see that McLaren will finally be bringing another big package. They did have one in Zanvor, which was pretty recent, so I'm not going to act like it's been a very long time. But when it comes to visual updates on the car, it's super hard to pick out what they've done. And they've changed very little because the balance in the car is tremendous. The team has just been on fire lately. I mean that in the context of being fast and also under fire from a lot of people trying to say their car is illegal. I made a whole video going over the mini DRS system that they kind of have implemented into their car and why I think it's actually a brilliant innovation made by McLaren. Go ahead and check that video out. I don't want to talk too much about that here. But what I do want to talk about is that there was a floor that's been talked about from McLaren and not actually brought to the car only for the reason that they don't want to imbalance this car and lose the advantage they have. In this season, we've seen so many upgrades actually fail and end up becoming downgrades to the car that McLaren themselves have actually decided to push back these upgrades and study them as hard as they can to see that it will work to the correlation based off of their wind tunnel. They've been pretty accurate so far when it comes to upgrades. A floor is expected here in Singapore. When it comes to the other stuff and him stating that we should see on the FI document what they're bringing, I do expect actually a pretty big package. And as I stated before, in 2023, that Singapore package was a very significant one. It actually brought them in contention with the top teams in slow speed corners. So it'll be interesting to see how this package does here in high downforce. I really expect McLaren to be strongest yet again. But the only thing that I wanted to mention and why I wore the Ferrari shirt was, yes, they aren't bringing any upgrades but it will be the first time that we see this car laid out in a high downforce package with the new floor that was brought in Monza. It'll be extremely important for 2025, but as well as this season, obviously for Leclerc to go up in places and for them to actually take the constructors from Red Bull and go into P2 to see if that floor works now in a very high downforce configuration because they've always been pretty strong in low downforce. They've also been really good in 90 degree angles and these street tracks like Baku, Singapore, Monaco. It's always been a Ferrari thing, but they have to know if the car will work well with plenty of bumps, curbs, and slow speed corners. So it's a very important GP for Ferrari to see how it's gonna work with that new floor. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. A lot to cover. Thursday, I will make the upgrades video. I missed it for Baku because of sickness, but I will be okay by then, and I'm very happy to be recording it again. If you guys did enjoy the video, please give it a like and subscribe. It would mean the world, and peace.